In this video, I'm going to go over a full example of how to calculate deflection of a frame using the method of virtual work. So this sample problem here has a portal frame with unequal legs, uh, 3 on the left, 4.5 on the right, and a 9 meter bay length with only a uniform dead load uh, on member BC. We're given that the EI is constant, so we have a Young's modulus here. We have a constant second moment of area of 600 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. And we're asked to find the horizontal deflection of point C here. So it's in interesting to note that even though there's only vertical loads on this frame, due to the existence of this roller and the ability of this frame to deform, point C is able to move left and right. And we're going to use the method of virtual work to find out just how far it's going to move. So, as usual, I'm going to start by finding the reactions, which I'll do quickly. So now I've found all three reaction components, the vertical at A, and the vertical and horizontal at D. And then so now we're going to do a regular frame analysis so that we can determine the internal forces in our frame for our real system here. Then later we're going to develop a virtual system and we'll go through a structural analysis of that system as well to find the virtual internal forces uh, for that system. Then we're going to combine these two systems in order to find our deflection using the principle of virtual work. So we have to go through this system. I'm going to do it explicitly, even though this is quite a simple system. So I'm going to start with member AB. So this is a free body diagram of member AB with the known and unknown forces shown. This 135 is our vertical reaction at A. And then we have to solve for these three unknowns. And if you want uh, another good example of frame analysis, there's a separate video that goes through a full frame analysis. So I'll go through this one pretty quickly. So let's solve for these unknown forces. And I come up with these forces. So you see that there's only an axial load on this member so it's actually not going to come into play for our virtual work analysis. But I'm going to carry these uh, loads, these unknown loads at the cut that I've made at this corner onto member BC to do the analysis of that member. A note on the notation again, so this is B in the X direction at the cut but for member AB because don't forget that when we move these forces onto the other member BC then we have to use the reverse directions. Okay, so let's do member BC. So I will draw the free body diagram for that member down here. So here I've transferred the only vertical, the only load that we had from AB since the, the moment and the x direction were zero. The moment the load that we found here, BYAB, was 135 in the downwards direction. So it was actually drawn backwards when I assumed the direction. And so it has to be on the upwards direction on member BC because it has to be equal and opposite at the cut. Then we've got our 30 kilonewtons per meter distributed load on member BC. And then again, these are the unload, uh, sorry, the unknown uh, loads and moment at the cut between member BC and member CD. So again, I'm going to use my three equations of equilibrium to find all of these three unknowns. So we see again that the moment at the end uh, equals zero, which we found using equilibrium, and we have a CY, BC here, which is 135 in the up direction. So this is a symmetric system here. And uh, FX again is equal to zero. So we can again transfer those forces and this is an optional step, but it uh, does help to draw the free body diagram and it does help to check that the answers that we've gotten so far are right. So I'll draw member CD. We have on CD the reaction force, DY, which we previously calculated. And then we have the only force that transmits over CY, which is up on C for BC, so it has to be down on C for CD, so it's 135 kilonewtons and we can easily see that this member is in equilibrium. So that gives us some confidence that the analysis that we've done so far is right. So therefore if I summarize the real system 
Okay, then I can show the shear forces. Kilonewtons. Which looks something like this. Okay, so here's our backbone frame. Then we don't have any shear on CD. We don't have any shear on AB either. We only have axial force on those two members. So the only one that we're concerned about with for shear and moment is BC. So we go up by 35. Then we go down with this distributed load by 30 kilonewtons every meter. Then we go up again by 30, 135. So our shear diagram looks like this. One thirty-five kilonewtons. This is one thirty-five kilonewtons and zero in the middle. So this distance here is four point five. And I can find that distance. Uh, these are the same, so I know that it's in the middle. But if they weren't the same, I could find that distance using similar triangles. So that's what our shear force diagram looks like. Then our moment diagram. Actually we can go straight to our curvature diagram because our EI is constant. Okay, so we have the same frame. Again, we only have moment on member BC, which is the top horizontal member. And so we start with a high slope, then we get to a zero slope, then we go to a steep negative slope. So it's a parabola that looks like this. And the peak of that is the area of this triangle which is equal to 303.75 and I'm going to divide that by EI to get our curvature. And again, this is in the center of that beam, 4.5 meters. And we'll need to know that when we do our, our virtual work calculations. So what this gives us for the real system is our real internal deformations. Of course what we're trying to solve for in this situation is the horizontal deflection at point C so that is our real external deformation which is our unknown and the next step is that we're going to go through and calculate a virtual system with a uh, thoughtfully placed unit load and then that will give us our virtual internal force based on that virtual external force which, force which is the unit load itself. So let's construct a virtual system to help us with our virtual work analysis. Okay so we already remember that we have to find the horizontal deflection at C. So in order to construct our virtual system what we want to do is at a unit load or a unit moment at the location of the point where we want to find a deflection or a slope. So here's our system. So at C, this is A, B, C, so here's C. At C we want to find the horizontal deflection. So I'm going to put a unit load, since it's deflection instead of rotation, so I'm going to put a unit load in the direction of the deflection that we want to find, which is the horizontal deflection. And so I'm going to put a unit load here, and I'm going to call that one kilonewton. And this is our virtual external force. And now we have to go through the uh, frame analysis process again in order to find our virtual internal forces, which are actually our virtual internal moments. So we need to find the moment diagram for this system. So again, first step is to find the reactions. And we find that we have a reaction, a negative vertical reaction at AY, a positive vertical reaction of 0.5 kilonewtons at D in the Y direction, and we have a reaction at this pin in the horizontal direction of 1 kilonewton, which balances the supplied virtual external force of 1 kilonewton. So I'm going to start again at member AB. and I'll draw the free body diagram of that system. And we find that again, similar to the last time, the X component at uh, the cut at B is equal to zero. The moment is also equal to zero and we have a vertical load BYAB which counteracts the reaction at the opposite end. So this time, remember AB is in tension, last time it was in compression. So I'm gonna carry those forces over to member BC 
and draw the free body diagram again. And so I've transferred the load BYAB, which was up on member AB, to a downwards load on member BC. That's the only load or moment at uh, point B from the previous member. Then I have three unknowns from the cut between member BC and member CD. And then I've also got the external load, 1.0 kilonewtons, which is the applied load at the point C, which is our virtual external force. Now recall that when we're doing our frame analysis like this, uh, and we have a, uh, some sort of load at a joint, then we can only put that load at a joint on one member, but not on both. So here I'm gonna, I've chosen to put this load on uh, member BC, but then when I go on to do the free body diagram of member CD, I'm going to leave that unit load out. So I can only put it on one member or the other, not both. Okay, so then I've done my equilibrium calculations and I come out with a moment C of 4.5 kilonewtons, which is clockwise, opposite of the way that I've drawn it, so that was a negative number in my equilibrium. And I have a CXBC of 1 kilonewton to the left, which is the transfer load to member CD and a vertical force of 0 0.5 in the upwards direction at uh, point C. So then again member CD now this is somewhat optional but it's also good to draw the free body diagram so it's easy for us to draw the shear force diagram and the moment diagram later so we might as well just put all of the loads here on member CD Okay, and so we have the 0 0.5, which was up on BC, so it's got to be down on CD. Then we have a horizontal load of 1.0, which was left on BC, so it's right on uh, CD. Then the moment was clockwise on member CB, so it has to be counterclockwise on member CD. And this is 4.5 kilonewton meters, kilonewtons, kilonewtons. And there's no external loads. I did not put the point load on member CD because we already have it on the previous one, as I mentioned. And then we have uh, 0 0.5 kilonewtons up and 1.0 kilonewtons to the left, which is our reaction forces. And then we can check and see that this is in equilibrium, which I'll tell you that it is. And I'll leave that for you to check. So therefore, our virtual system looks like this. So if I want to draw the shear force diagram, which we're not really interested in, but can help us draw our moment diagram, it looks like this. And I'll draw it in a different color because this one is a little bit confusing. So shear force diagram looks like this. So for member BC, we go down by 0.5, then we go up by 0.5. So this is 0 0.5 and constant all the way along. And then we have a moment a shear force of 1 1.0 on member CD because we have one uh, out and then one back in so I'm going one out and one back in okay now it's interesting also to note that uh, this could be seen as going down instead of up so really how you rotate member CD uh, doesn't really matter. I like to go around the outside. So so this member here, I would rotate it down. This member, I would look across. And then this member, I would rotate it up. So as if I was just stretching this piece out into one continuous beam. And that's the way I look at the directions. So when I start drawing the shear force diagram for AB, I start at A and I move to B. Then for BC, I start at B and move to C. And then instead of going from D to C, so from down to up, for member CD, I start at C and then I move to D. So C is the left side of my beam and D is the right side. And this way we can use our, uh, our sign conventions in order to calculate uh, consistent shear and moment diagrams. But you always have to watch and make sure that your moments make sense and that they're compatible at the corners especially. So our moment diagram looks like this. Okay, so here's the backbone. Okay, then we have no moments on member A, B. 
Member BC, we have no moment here, which increases to a moment of 4.5 at member at point C. And now, so this is a clockwise rotation. So if this is clockwise, like this, you got to remember that these arrows at the end of the beam point towards the compression side. So we're drawing our moment diagrams on the compression side. So I'm going to draw it like this. This is 4.5. Okay. And then we can look at member CD, which also has a 4.5 moment at one side and zero moment at the other. So this is a triangular shape as well. And this points towards the compression side. Okay, this counterclockwise. So the compression side is on the inside here, which is over here. Okay, that's 4.5. And this makes sense. So now the corner is compatible because the moment is the same, and it's on the same side of the frame at either side at uh, at either side of this joint. Okay, so that's a compatible moment diagram. And this gives us our virtual internal forces. Okay. So now that we know those virtual internal forces, uh, for our virtual system, we know our virtual external force, uh, which is our applied unit load. We know our real internal deformations from our real system moment diagram. And what we're trying to find is our real external deformation, which is the deformation of point C to the right. So we have everything that we know to do our virtual work analysis. Okay, so let's calculate. Our first step is to calculate our internal virtual work. Okay, and you can use integration to do this, or you can use a table. I'll do it both ways, but I'll start with the table. So let's take a look at what a virtual internal work uh, analysis looks like. So what we need to do is we need to find remember the integration of MVM over EI DX. This is our internal virtual work. right? So in order to find the integration of these two, we need the virtual moment diagram and we need the real moment diagram. And these two we're going to put together, or we can say the real curvature diagram if we consider M over EI altogether. So we need to find the integration of the product of these two. Now we can find equations for each of these and then find the product of those equations and then integrate. That's one way. Or we can use a table based on the shapes. So here I have on my real system a parabola shape. And I want to multiply that parabola at every point times our triangle for the virtual internal forces. And then I'm going to integrate. I want to integrate that product. Now I can do that easily by taking a look at what the answer is. So here's an example of a virtual work integration table that I made. Um, so you see we're finding the integral of the product of these two uh, shapes. Okay. So if we have a parabola and we have a triangle, then the integral of the product of these two, which is what we're trying to find, is 5 L M Q over 12. L is the length, which is common between the two shapes. M is the height of the triangle. Q is the height of the parabola. And 5 over 12 is a constant that allows us to find that area. You can see that there are a lot of different uh, types of analyses, uh, a lot of different types of integrals that you can do here by combining rows and columns. So let's look at our particular case and figure out what to do. So you'll notice that that parabola was only a half parabola in the table. So we have to look for half parabolas that end with a slope of 0. So we're going to split this into two half parabolas. So we have shape 1 and we have shape 2 and deal with them separately. Now there's no moment on this leg. So we know that the internal virtual work for this leg is going to be equal to 0. Even though there's a moment on the leg in the virtual diagram. So that's because a product of something times nothing is nothing, right? So we're only concerned with the moment in our virtual uh, in our virtual system uh, on member BC, BC. Okay, so now we have this triangle, but we're going to have to divide it into two pieces, one and two. 
because we need the shapes that we're integrating to be of the same length. So since we have to deal with a half length here, because we can only have a solution for a half parabola, then we have to divide this into a triangle and a trapezoid. Okay, and deal with these two separately. So we need the height here, which from similar triangles is just equal to half of the total height, because this is at 4.5 meters. And that is equal to 2.25 here. Okay, so what we do is we go work virtual internal. Okay, our first piece is a parabola times a triangle. And the short side of the parabola and the short side of the triangle are on the same side. So we go to our table. We have parabola. We have a triangle where the parabola and the triangle have the uh, short side on the same side. If we didn't have the short side on the same side, then then we could look at this other triangle that's down near the bottom. Okay, so we would get a different response here. But so we have it on the same side. So we know that our integral of the product is 5 over 12 lmq. So let's just put that in over here. So we're going to have 5 lm q over 12. Here our m. Okay, m is the height of the triangle. So for us, that's 2.25. So this is negative 2.25 since it's on the negative side of the moment diagram. And then our Q is the height of our parabola, which is equal to 303.75 over EI. 303.75 over EI. Okay, so we'll call this shape one, and this is a triangle times a parabola. Okay, and then the second shape that we have, we have a parabola again, okay, in the opposite direction. So the top, the high side is on the left. And then we have a trapezoid on the right for shape two. Okay, so if we go back to our table, we find parabola, trapezoid. Okay, M, A, M, B is going to become important, okay. For the trapezoid, it doesn't matter which side is higher as long as you're using the same. So the left side of this trapezoid, MA, has to coincide with the short side of the parabola, and the right side of this trapezoid, MB, has to coincide with the tall side of the parabola. So here we have LQ over 12 times 3MA plus 5MB. So let's put that in here. LQ over 12 times 3MA plus 5MB. Okay, our Q is the height of the parabola again, which is 303.75 over EI. Okay, now our MA, as we said, MA has to coincide with the short side of the parabola. The short side of our parabola is on the right. Okay, so we need the height of the trapezoid on the right for MA, which is 4.5. MA is 4.5. And then MB is the short side of the parabola, which is 2.25. And these are both negative because they're on the bottom with respect to the parabola, which was on the top. Okay, so this is 2. And this is a trapezoid times a parabola. Okay, so now if I fill in all of these numbers, and then I solve the resulting equation, then I'm going to get that WVI is equal to 4100 negative 0.6 over EI. So now that I know our internal virtual work, we can do our virtual work balance, which is external virtual work equals internal virtual work, right? Which is the principle of internal, uh, which is the principle of virtual work. Okay, so our external force, this is our external virtual force, one kilonewton, which is our unit load times our external real deformation, right, which is our delta C, which is what we're trying to find, equals our internal virtual work, which we found above, 4100.6 over EI. And then we rearrange for delta C, 
4100.6. This is in kilonewton squared meters cubed. Okay, divided by one kilonewton and 200,000 MPa, which is our E, and 600 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth, which is our I. And if we keep track of our units properly, okay, because these are kilonewton meters, and this is kilonewtons, and this is newtons per millimeter squared, and this is millimeters to the fourth, then we get delta C is 34.2 millimeters, okay, and this is negative. Now, it's negative, that means it's in the opposite direction of the unit load that we drew, which was to the right, okay, the unit load that we drew looked like this, right, this was our unit load. So therefore, since this came out negative, it has to be to the left. Okay, and so we found our lateral deflection of point C for the real system. So this is our external deformation of the real system. And we've solved our problem. Now we might want to look at this problem in a different way and find out if we can do this using integration instead of using the table. So for some problems this might actually be easier if you can find out what the uh, equations are for the moment in terms of x for the real and virtual system easily. So we only have moment curvature, moment or curvature on, uh, on both real and virtual system for uh, member BC. So this is what we found before. Okay, so there's moment on the internal, uh, sorry, there's moment on the virtual system on both member BC and CD, but there was only moment on the real system on member BC. So this is the only one we had to consider. Now, if there was moment here too on our real system, then we would have to do an additional parts to figure out the product of the real system and the virtual system for CD. But in this situation, we only have BC. So we're only going to look at finding the equations for the moments for that branch. Okay, so our real system, okay, looks like this. Okay, so we have BC, okay, this is the moment. That's 303.75. Okay, and we'll say that X starts from B. So this is remember BC. Okay, and this continues off. All right, so recall, okay, we need to find an equation for this parabola. Okay, so recall the equation for a general parabola, right? It looks like this, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, if we wanna find out what these constants are, we can apply the uh, boundary conditions of, uh, of this parabola. So we know that at x equals zero, okay, at x equals zero, the moment also equals zero, right? So that means the y of our parabola equals zero. So therefore, so if we made the x is zero here and we made the y zero, then it would be clear that c equals zero. Okay, then at x equals nine, which is the right side at point c, we also know that y equals zero. That's our moment, right? So therefore, we can sub this in, so y equals zero equals a nine squared plus b times nine. We already know that c equals zero, so I'll leave it out. So therefore, we know that b equals nine, negative nine times a. And the last boundary condition that's easy for us to find is this peak here, which we know occurs at 4.5 meters. Okay, so at x equals 4.5, y equals 303.75 and so we can sub that in as well 3.75 equals a 4.5 squared plus b which is negative 9a times 4.5 and if we rearrange that equation we solve for a is negative 15 and b is equal to 135 
So therefore, we can say that m at BC, okay, so the, the equation for the moment for the entire length of BC in terms of x is equal to 135x minus 15x squared. Okay, and then for our virtual system, okay, which looks like this for BC, here's BC, we know that it looks like this, right, that goes to 4.5. Okay, if we go way up here, right? So we have 4.5 at C, 0 at B, and a linear change. So this equation is really easy to find. MV, so that's the virtual moment for BC, is equal to negative 0 0.5 times X. So now, if you recall, our virtual internal work is equal to the integration for the whole length of a section of mv times m over ei dx. So if we solve this, we can take ei to the outside since it's constant. 0 to 9, I sum in mvbc, which is negative 0.5x. And I sub in mbc, which is for the real system, 135x minus 15x squared dx. Okay, then I'm going to do the integration. And then I'm going to evaluate that integrated solution for the limits of the limits of integration. So I'm going to get 1 over ei 12301.9 minus 16402.5 Okay, those are for 9, so I just sub in 9 into here. And then I would subtract the whole thing times 0, but we know that that's going to equal 0. So that's it. So then WVI, if I just work this out, is equal to negative 4100.6 over EI. Okay, which is the same value that we got when we used our table, which is right here. So then after that, the rest is the same. And we use this in our virtual work expression in order to find the deflection at C. And that is how you solve for the deflection of a point on a frame using the method of virtual work.